everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I'm Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world. Today, we're going to have a lot of fun because we're going to do a lattice card, an open lattice card. And there are so many different ways to do this, and there's tons of videos out there on different types of lattice cards and stair step cards and... Um, some people call them split lattice. Some people call them um, Venetian blind cards. There's so many different ways to do it. But this is a true crisscross lattice that I think that you're really going to enjoy. It's easy to do. And it's really interesting. And I think that when you make cards like this, people will really be interested in how you came about doing it. But before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, I love lettuce, especially when you put it in that P.F. Chang sauce with the <laughs> with the chicken stuffing, lettuce. Lattice. Wraps. Lattice. 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 Not lettuce. Okay. We're not doing lettuce. <laughs> All right. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome. Happy afternoon. How are you doing today? <laughs> Better than horrible. Well, I'm just running around. I was thrilled to see that I was facing in the right direction when I when when i turn the camera on because it's been that kind of day it really has i hear mercury is like in retrograde or something i don't know <laughs> did you ever and and i think mercury is like the communication planet or something like that but did you ever have a day where you're asking all these questions and i'm a pretty good question asker and i keep getting responses that don't answer the question yeah, I've had those days. Oh, boy. I'm having one of those days, too. But today, we're going to do our best to answer all the questions that come up in the chat. Right, Tom? I'm going to put you in charge of that. Okay. Oh. Boy, yeah, there's the pressure. <laughs> well, we're going to have fun. All right. Well, we'll be back later, maybe, with a word of the day. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That sounds good. Okay, so let's get started right away. Now, one of the things that I really like to do, and you guys know this, is... I like to bring old stamps and stencils and dies back into action. When you get something from Gina K Designs, it doesn't have a lifespan really because I go back to the oldies quite a bit because I don't design something unless I love it enough to use it more than one time. And today I was going to use a stencil set that we released several months ago. And even though it's not a Christmas set, I wanted to show you how you can work some of your other layering stencils and stamps into your Christmas cards just by using colors that are very Christmas oriented and then adding the right greeting, making it look a lot more festive. So with that in mind, I'm going to be using the Create Friendship stencil set. And this is it here. You may remember this one. I really love this one. It has a butterfly in it. We're not going to use the butterfly today. We're just going to use these flowers and these leaves, and we're going to do them in Christmassy colors, very bright red and green, and make them look very festive. Kimberly, you're really asking the questions. I think you're going to feel Mercury in retrograde with that question today. Do you have an answer for that, Tom? Uh, yeah, I I, I do, but I don't think we have time for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then we're also going to use the coordinating die set for that particular stencil set. And then for the greetings, I thought it might be fun to use this Feeling Frosty from our new kit, our latest kit. I thought we could do a little Merry Christmas greeting and cut it out and just place it right into this particular um, floral design. All right, so let's start now with this kind of stencil. I really like doing the die cutting for it first. So I'm going to cut out one of these dies here. This is the large floral image. And I just need a quick piece of white cardstock. So I'm going to grab some white cardstock. That one has a dent in it. I don't want to do that if I'm ink blending. I mean, a dent, that can't help, right? A dent is not going to help. And then I need, let's see, put that there, and we'll cut this out. All right. We're getting right into it here. No dilly-dallying today. Well, I was reading about, um, you know, a lot of times I'm in different stamping groups, and I see posts about 
people, whether they like live videos versus whether they like pre-recorded videos. And I think it's a big mix of both. And a lot of people like both. Um, but I think the thing that people, at least what I'm reading is the thing that people really want the most is, you know, for it not to take too long to start getting into the project. So hopefully you feel like we're doing that for you and getting right into it because um, I agree with that. I think it is definitely more fun to get crafting right away. All right. So I'm going to line this up. Okay. Big question here. Okay. From Doreen, who is fairly new here. Hi, Doreen. Place my first order for August kit and waiting on that to ship. What colors should I start with to have for this season, Christmas, and in general? Well, you know, for Christmas, I mean, it really depends because a lot of things can look very Christmassy. I think that... Um, obviously red and green. So I would start with something like red velvet and maybe jelly bean or lucky clover, fresh asparagus, pick your favorite tone of green. Some people really like those bright greens for Christmas and other people really like the deep, more wintry looking greens, autumny greens. So pick a red and a green for sure. And maybe a gold tone color like prickly pear. And then add some um, blues into that. I love powder blue. I also love the teals for the holidays because I think that they're very wintry and they work great with snow and other things like that. So I think the best thing for anybody to do if they're really just getting started is watch a few videos and pick a couple of card projects that you want to make and figure out the supplies for those and just get started like that. And maybe start small when it comes to ink. Maybe pick up a um, set of ink cubes. Maybe the winter ink cubes would be a great one to start with because it's got reds, it's got the Christmas green or Christmas pine, um, and it's got some nice deep blues in there too. All right, so you can see I've lined that up. I'm going to press down on there so you, so you can see. I've lined that up, and I'm going to do these four, well, these three flowers and this bud with a bright red. So that is going to be, it could be either red velvet or we could use red hot. Either one of these are great for this particular look. I think I'll do, I've been doing so much red hot lately that I think I'm going to switch today to red velvet. So I'm going to ink up my brush. I did clean the brush. I don't know if you saw me do that, but I had a lot of faded brick on here and tomato soup and a, maybe not tomato soup, but faded brick on here from a project that I had just done. And so to clean the brush, I just take a paper towel and I just rub off the majority of the color until it starts to look similar to the color I want to use. So I got rid of all of that darker brick and now it's looking pretty bright red and I think it's going to work just fine. I think one thing that does happen, um, yeah, this, the stencil looks blurry. Yeah. Well, here, let me put something in front of the camera and tell me if this looks blurry. Does this look blurry? That looks pretty crisp, right? So it's really just the stencil because it's milky. Okay. So now I'm going to start in the center of each of these flowers and add some nice red. Okay, question from Martha. She wants to know, how do you keep that stencil from not bending in the tiny parts? Oh, it does bend. I just bend it back into shape. It definitely bends. You have to be a little bit gentle with it. Um, you're better off, instead of pressing too hard with your blending brush, to um, just layer color on, you know, with a lighter hand, because these stencils, and you'll find this, it's not just this stencil, but lots of companies have very delicate stencils like this. And you kind of need those delicate parts to get the real beautiful floral look. But yeah, you're going to have a little bit of bending here and there. I just bend them back into place. Now, some people use pixie spray. If you don't know what pixie spray is, this is pixie spray. And Pixie spray will hold these tiny pieces down into place and won't allow any ink to creep underneath. You just need a very, very fine mist. It's light tack. 
I spray it over an open box when I use it. The only thing is that it it's very difficult to get off your stencil, but it really doesn't need to come off your stencil because you're going to use it over and over again whenever you use your stencil so you don't have to keep reapplying it. <clears throat> but that will help keep those little pieces, those little bits and pieces. Like you can see this one right here. Where's my, where's my stick tool? Here it is. Um, this one right here is a little bit bent on mine. And I just, when I clean it, I just press it back into shape, but it does kind of bend up a little. All right, I'm going to go in with just a little bit more red, but real close to the center, just to darken that up a little bit. Okay, and Angie wants to know, how does red velvet differ from red hot? That's a good question. That is a good question. Okay, so we have three main reds that I would consider perfect for Christmas, and that is red hot, red velvet, and cherry red. So reds have different undertones, like base colors. Red hot would have an orange undertone, so it's very calypso red, very vibrant red. Che wild cherry, oh, let me see here. Cherry, where is it? Cherry, cherry red. Here it is. Ch ch here's red hot. Has that orangey undertone. Cherry red has the blue undertone. Much deeper, more country red. The color of cherries. And then red velvet is just a true red. It's not orange. It's not blue. It is just pure, pure red. So that's how I describe the three reds. All right, so I'm going to take this off here because I think we're done with this one. Oh, look how pretty that is. I definitely feel like that's a festive look. Now we're going to go on to stencil two, and we are going to line up our leaves. We are, right? Is this the right? Yeah, this is the right stencil. Goodness, I can't even, I can't even tell what I'm doing here. Here we go. Okay, so... We just want to line up like this one up here at the top and this one down here at the bottom. And when you do that, everything else kind of falls into place. Do we have a date yet for the next release? Well, we are working on it because we actually have something very special coming. And I'm very excited about it, but I can't tell you about it. And I know that's mean. But our, our big release for the month, the plan is October 20... I don't have a calendar. Um... I'll have to look, but it is that, that, I think it's the third Thursday in October. Yeah. 19th? What? No, not that one. The 20, do you have a calendar? Yeah. What's 19th the, is, uh, Thursday. what's the following Tuesday? Uh, would be the 24th. That's the one. That's when we're planning. 24th. But again, I don't like to commit until I know our dyes are on the way because our dyes always take a little bit longer. Okay, now I'm going to use Jelly Bean Green, and I'm going to work my way from the end of the leaves forward to get the darkest color kind of back where they're coming out of the flowers. Okay. I love jelly bean green for Christmas, but I like to mix it with fresh asparagus. And I think I might do that. I might add a little fresh asparagus down at the bottom of these leaves. Okay. This is not the card, by the way. I mean, it is the card, but this is not the technique. This is just something I am starting with here. I'm going back to that first stencil again, so hang on with me. Because I got to fill in these flower areas. Okay, so Anne is wondering, why not use the smaller blending brushes? Oh, I have them. Um, and I do use them. In fact, I'm going to grab a small one to add some fresh asparagus. It's really up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. When I'm doing larger areas, I like to use the bigger brush just because it's all going to be the same color. 
But when I'm going to do something like this next technique here with the fresh asparagus, then I'm going to use the small one because I only want to go a little bit into each leaf. So we're going to add fresh asparagus in there just to deepen up down near the bottoms of these leaves. That just gives us a little bit more dimension and depth. See how that's looking? But if you just have the small blending brushes, you can certainly use them for large areas. So, you know, you just might have to re-ink a little bit more. That's all. And what stencil is this from? This is the Create Friendship stencil. See, I'm coming up this way to add a little bit of darkness closer to where the bud is, where the leaves at the end are a little lighter. Okay, we'll take that off and see what that looks like. It's so yummy. Whoa. Love it. And we're going to put, not this one back yet, but I do want this one in the mix. All right, now we're going to add this right here. Oops, make sure you have it facing the right way. Did you see how that did not face the right way and it didn't look very good? Okay. So now usually for the centers of these kinds of flowers, I like to use a pop of black. I think I might go with prickly pear this time get a little bit of gold in there because I feel like that might look a little more Christmassy. And welcome everyone. It is great to see all of you here today. Thank you so much for being here. We always go live every Thursday at noon and we appreciate you guys spending your time with us. We also go live on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Okay, so now I'm going to add some prickly pear into the centers here. If I don't like it, I can always go back over it with black, but I think it's gonna be fine. But I seem to like to put a little black into everything. Now I'm gonna make these flowers um, prickly pear also. So I'm gonna add that. Cause I feel like a little bit of prickly pear is kind of the equivalent to a gold and gold always looks Christmassy to me when you mix it with red and green. We can go a little darker if we want, deepen it up. So it doesn't look too yellow. It looks deeper and more gold. And prickly pear is a very green gold or green yellow. It's not like wild dandelion or honey mustard. They're very autumny. And although this is a great color for autumn, I think this one, really works its way into the winter season as well. If you needed a winter yellow, this is the one. And I believe it might be in our winter ink cube collection, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we're gonna pull this off. Doesn't that, it feels, it feels festive to me. Do you know what kind of flower that is? I don't know what kind of flower it is, but maybe one of our flower people out there would know what color kind of flower it is. It kind of looks like a poppy to me. It has a poppy feel to it. But again, like I said, with these kinds of um, cards, you can pretty much use any flower you want. And then as long as you have it in the right colors and then you have the right greeting, a lot of them can double for different holidays. So you don't kind of look at your spring flowers in a different way. All right, so I'm gonna just pop these right onto here in the center. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. I feel like, oh, I don't wanna do black. I know, can you believe it? I don't wanna do black, but I don't wanna do black because I don't have black anywhere else. I feel like if I did a real dark brown, that might be good. So maybe I'll do some charcoal brown for this. Charcoal brown's a good color. It's a brown black. It would be like if you were trying to get away from black mascara, <laughs> you could go with this brown black and it would look great. This would be a great color. I'm just looking for my tiny brush for my brown. Here it is. Okay. So I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of this 
on my brush and I'm going to give it a light blend right in there. There we go. I don't want to go too heavy. Just enough. All right, so my flower is done and I'm going to put my flower aside because that is what I'm going to be doing for the main part of my card. This is going to be my design. And then when we add this Christmas greeting on top, it's going to feel very festive. We don't have a gold ink yet. Let me just put it that way. Yet, we don't have a gold ink. And one more thing I wanted to tell you. If you really wanted to make this very festive and add a little sparkle and shine, you could do a couple different things. You could add deco foil transfer gel into these parts of the stencil, and then you could foil it in gold or silver, like our gold glitter or silver glitter. You could also pounce in with a sponge dauber a little bit of Versamark, and then you could emboss those with gold or silver to have a more antique look about it. So don't forget there's other ways to use uh, your stencils without necessarily always using ink blending. And I'll get into some of that for a future card for sure. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to start our lattice. So let me move my stencils away. I'm not going to clean them first. I'm going to just get into this right away. So now what we're going to do to start is we are going to take a paper cutter and this is a great technique for using your strips or scraps, whatever you have laying around. I'm going to do mine all in white because I want, there's a lot of color here and I kind of want um, the lattice to be in white in the background. But I'm going to cut some big strips. So I'm going to start with just this. It's not a full half sheet of cardstock. I can't really use it as a card base or anything. I could die cut from it and stuff like that. But I'm going to use this. And I want to make sure that I start at an even number. So you can see here I'm starting at five inches. And then I'm just going to cut a bunch of strips by moving down to the different squares. I'm moving down into quarter inches here. So I'm going to four and three quarters, cutting a strip, going down to four and a half, cutting a strip, going down to four and a quarter. And I'm just going to keep cutting. And I'm probably going to end up cutting more strips than I actually need, but that's okay because, hey, you know, these will be ready to go if I want to make a second card later. I'm just going to keep going. And you don't need all big strips, so I'm also going to cut some smaller ones. And this is a great use for those weird pieces of cardstock that you're like, eh, you know, I want to do something with that, and I don't really know what to do. And you can go down to some very small pieces of cardstock, because when you're doing lattice, you will need smaller ones as well. And it depends on your lattice and how you're planning to do it. So I have all of those there. Then I'm going to get another piece of cardstock here. Let's see. Um, here's one. I'm just going to start that. Oh, that's already at six inches, so that's good. I'm just going to go down and cut some smaller ones too. Just so I don't use all the big ones where I don't need to use them. And it's pretty easy to cut these. We also have a die set that will cut strips for you. And that is, I'm going to say it's Master Layouts 8. It's the one for our 5 by 7 cards. So if you don't like cutting strips like this, you can run that die through a couple of times. And it'll give you probably 5 or 6, 7 strips at a time, something like that. So you can look at that on our website or look through your stash if you already have it. And you can use that as well. Do you ever have to sharpen your cutters? Um, you know, with a small cutter like this, I don't. They are supposed to be self-sharpening because the blades rub together and you're supposed to just be able to pull the handle a little bit that way and run the blades up and down against each other and that's supposed to sharpen the blade. But at some point, these blades just get dull and these paper cutters are not super expensive. So every once in a while, I treat myself to a new one. I've had this one for years, um, and it's go still going strong. So, But I, I have replaced 
replaced it in the past. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of cardstock that is the size of a card front. So let me get my paper cutter back here. I don't know why I put it away. But I need a piece of cardstock that is the size of a card front. So I'm going to cut this in half at five and a half inches. And then I'm going to cut it to four and a quarter. So that is the size of a card front. Okay. Now I am going to cut this down using a die. I'm going to cut a box out of it. So let's see what box I want to cut. I think I'm going to use Master Layouts 1. You are going to need a die for this part. I don't know where my Master Layouts 1 went, so that's not good. But I'll find it. Give me a second. It's here. It's just hiding because I don't keep anything very clean, and so everything is out of order. Here it is. Okay, so what we want to do here is we have... We're going to take this down to three and three quarters by five. So that means we're gonna use the, not the largest rectangle, but the smaller of the two big rectangles. You know what, I don't think that that's gonna be good. I think I wanna go smaller than that. I'm gonna go down to master layouts too. I'm sorry, those of you crafting along just finally found your master layouts one. You probably wanna hit me in the head. <laughs> but here, let's go with this one. This is three and a half by four and three quarters. And I think I kind of like that. I want a bigger border around this card. So, and I do want to show you, I've been really getting into Masking Magic lately as the best adhesive for holding my dies down. I'm telling you guys, I love using Masking Magic for that. So once you get your die centered, you want it to be as centered as possible. Because you can put this right on the front of the card. And I like to get a piece of one of these Masking Magic strips. This is such, so low tech, but it holds and I love that. So I just broke it in half here. And I want to make sure that it really looks even. Once I have it where I want it, then I'm going to tack it down there, tack it down there, I love that it's easy to tear too. Okay, I just don't want that to shift when I run through, when I run it through the machine. And here we go. <laughs> no, you haven't missed a, the word of the day yet. Tom says he has one, but <laughs> things are definitely hiding. I have been super busy. Thank you for acknowledging that. It's been crazy lately. Okay. And you know, a good place to store your strips that you use for your die cuts is right on your machine. And I should do that more Then they're always ready to go. And you can reuse them over and over again. And it doesn't tear the paper. I love that. Now, the good thing about using Master Layouts 2 for this is you can just save this panel. Oh, my die cutting plates are so dirty. You can just save this panel. And then we use these all the time, right? So you've just created a Master Layouts 2 panel for your next card project. So I'm going to put that away. And I'm going to keep this. And then we are going to get started with our lattice. Sorry for the noise. Alrighty. So you can do this a couple different ways. First, I'm going to look at the ugly side because you know when you die cut, the side that cuts presses a nice curve. It rolls the paper under a little bit. So you do want to have the right side up. So I'm going to turn it. This is the ugly side. And then you can do this a couple different ways. You can use tape for this or you can use connect glue. It doesn't really matter. I think I'm going to use tape because it's just going to, I don't have to deal with the drying thing. So I'm just going to go right around the perimeter here, right around the whole thing. Okay. I'm going to flip this over just in case I got any tape anywhere that I don't want it. 
And now I'm going to start with a long strip and I'm gonna place that strip from one corner to the other corner like that. Get it nice and flat. And then just using a pair of scissors, I'm just gonna trim the excess off. Now what I've seen other people do in the past is they do all the ones that go this way and then they do all the ones that go this way. I like that. It looks good. But if you kind of go back and forth a little bit, at least some of them will weave into each other. And I don't have time to weave. And I, I mean that with like all the love in the world of people that do the weaving technique and it's beautiful. But I just want to I just want to lay these down and be kind of done with it. So I'm going to crisscross it the other way. Now I'm going to start up there and I'm gonna to go to this side. Okay. Now in here where it is coming apart like that, you can take your connect glue and you can just slip the connect glue right underneath and put a tiny dot of connect glue and then press it down. And that will prevent that from coming apart there. Okay. Now we're going to do our next one. So I'm going to turn this a little bit on an angle. Now, if you have trouble spacing and eyeballing it, and some people do, and I get that, all you have to do is use one of these extra little pieces and just put it in there as a spacer. And then that will help you decide where the next one should go. So if you like them a quarter of an inch apart, you can kind of lay that up against that like that. And then you have that as a quarter of an inch apart. And then I'm gonna just trim this in, stick into everything. Okay, now I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do this side. Now I feel like I can see it pretty well, but again, if you feel like you can't, just pop that little spacer in there, line it up, and then once you've got it lined up, then you can, and you can line it up on both sides too if you want. I actually think for me, it feels a little bit easier to not use the spacer but you can see what's happening here, right? Okay. There we go. So now I want to just tack these two down. So I'm going to slip a little connect glue under each of those, just a tiny dot. And it's nice because you can do just the tiniest little dot. And then tap that down. And you can see it's holding things together. Now, I did get a little glue on the front here. And if you do, you can just use a mono sand eraser and you can just sand that glue right off. Ooh, but remember, you have it taped there. Okay, so now the last one we did was this one. Let's go over here and do this one. So now I can use some of these shorter ones, I believe. And I'm going to just eyeball it. You're using layering weight? I'm using all layering weight here, yep. I feel like the layering weight just is easier to manipulate for this. And you can glue at the very end, and that's what I'm going to do. I was just showing you that as I went along. And now I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to do this one here. And I love using the dot adhesive because it is forgiving and if something doesn't look right, you know, you can pick it up and move it around. There we go. Now you could stop there if you want. And that could be the look that you're going for. If you put that on top of colored cardstock, it would look beautiful. If you did alcohol ink techniques or ink blending, it would be beautiful. But I'm gonna do a little bit more. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I really do kind of like the look of less, so I'm not gonna do the entire thing in lattice, but 
I'm gonna have enough of it to get the look. Okay, so here we go. Kinda of loving this. So now I got that one. So now we'll turn and we'll go here. And just kind of this turning and going, it helps create that little bit of a weave, a woven look, even though you're not really weaving through everything. Okay. Then we'll do this one here. And then we'll do one more. And I think we'll stop there. We'll do one up here, right here. Now you don't have to go through a rectangle either. If you prefer, you could have cut an oval out and you could have just done this over an oval and then you would have a weave pattern shining through your oval on the front. But I wanted to get as much weave as I could. So that's really pretty, isn't it? I really like it. You know what? I'm going to do one more going around. I do like that though. Let me look and see how this is going to look because this is going to go on the side. So do you think we need a little bit more? I think we need a little bit more so we can see a little bit more of the basket weave. Let's go one more round. So this was the last one. You can always tell what your last one is because there's nothing on top of it. So we did that one. Let's go over here. But if you go, oh, if you do one more, you got to do, you know, all around because you want that triangle shape to be centered. So we did that. Come over here. And then we'll glue all these loose things down with the connect glue. I'm running out of shorties. So I'll just use a big one if I completely run out. And it is pretty easy to eyeball too. So I would, you know, give it a try and see, see if you can eyeball it. If you can't, then go ahead and, you know, start measuring. And then when you get to a point where there isn't any adhesive, you can always put adhesive down. We'll see how this looks. Okay. I think that's good. I think that's enough. We can really kind of see how much we've got going on here. Clean that out. I'll, I'll get that with the mono sand eraser when I'm done. And if I can't get it out, that's going to be part of my greeting. Actually, I think this might even cover it a little bit. So maybe I won't overthink it. See how it just covers that little spot. Okay, now let's go back in here and get the connect glue and let's just tack some of this down. So we'll do a little dot there. I wanna make sure the dots are coming out. There we go. Okay, tiny little dot here, 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 and here. Just press that down. Just places where it's really looking loose. We can also do this from the front as well. And I always go in where there isn't any white with that fine tip bottle, you can really get in there. Oop, that went really far out. So I'm gonna clean that with a little cloth, a little piece of paper towel. We'll just absorb that up. Okay. This one. Gluing blind, you know. And I'm just looking to see where they're loose over here. And if it sneaks out, just blot it up with your paper towel. 
And then this last bit here. Okay. So I think that's pretty good. Everything is nice and tight now. Nothing's like flapping around. And now we are going to, ooh, let me get this up here. And now we're gonna finish off this side because this is actually going to be our whole card front. So I'm gonna finish these edges off by adding some thicker pieces of lattice. And I'm gonna measure that. I think I have a ruler around here somewhere. Do I have a ruler, Tom? Hmm, maybe my ruler, I took it in the other room. That's all right, let's take a look here and see if we can get an idea of how thick. Okay, so we'll make it, we're gonna go a little bit over. So we'll make them about, let's do like a half inch. So we'll do some half inch, let me get this out of the way, some half inch strips. This is gonna clean up our edges. So our card measures four and a quarter this way, four and a quarter this way by five and a half this way. So we're gonna do a five and a half inch, and then we're gonna do two half inch panels, strips, I should say. So these will get to go on our edges here to clean it up. And then we're just gonna trim the excess off, okay? Amy, I've tried cutting another frame out. It's very hard to nail it in exactly the same spot. I guess you could, you know what we could do? Instead of trying to nail it, why don't we just cut a much bigger piece like this and we'll cut it out and then we'll just line it up. Yeah, okay, we'll try that. I'm just gonna cut it out of a full half sheet though. See, the problem is if you try to cut the exact same size and then nail the open spot, if it's a little off on the top or the side, it's not gonna line up. But we will do it like this. I do like the upholstery idea. If you don't wanna waste a whole sheet of cardstock and you've got strips, all you have to do is put these around the edges and then flip it over and trim it along the right side edge. But we're gonna try this because Amy mentioned it and I'm going for it. So we're gonna go with a big one here, okay? A lot of times these things are easier to see than to just talk about. All right, so I have a big piece of cardstock here. It doesn't really have to be this big. It just has to be bigger than this. And I'm going to cut a Master Layouts 2, same opening out of this. Okay. There we go. Now I've got another one of these. So for my next card. This will be for next Tuesday, I guess, right? <laughs> or my five minute card over the weekend, we'll see. Now, let's try this. I'm gonna cut a little of this off on the edge anyway. Okay. So now we've got to line this up perfectly. And I would do it from like one corner in and we gotta get tape on there. So line it up like that. Got it? Yeah, it is layering weight, so it's super lightweight, so it's fine to just, you know, to pile these on. I'm going right over the top of those strips. And this is gonna lock all the strips down too, so nothing's gonna move around, which is very nice. sticking. And like I said, there's lots of different ways to do this. So if you have a better way to do it, do it. I definitely want you to do it. You're welcome to share it in our group. Now let's make sure we have the right side here. We want the good looking side. And I'm going to come in from this top corner and then into the bottom. Okay. 
Now I'm going to trim it all along these edges. So this could be a little bit tricky. Let's see what I can do. I just got to get one right. I'm going to come down a little bit more first so I can see it better. Taking a little off at a time. I could do it with scissors. What am I that good? Can I cut straight with scissors? I don't know. Some of you guys are way better with scissors than I am, but I could try it. It has a nice line there, so I should be able to see it. We have kind of glary lights here too. Okay, that looks good. If I can get it pretty good, I could go back and refine it with my paper cutter. I'm only going to do two sides. The rest I'm going to do with the paper cutter. Okay. So that's good. I'm going to see if I can clean that up at all. That's good. And remember, we have our sanding block. If we need to sand anything, we can always use that sanding block just to get it nice and smooth. Okay, so now I know how big it needs to be, so I can go right to the four and a quarter. And then the five and a half. There we go. Larry said this is like card surgery. It kind of is. <laughs> I probably should have just upholstered it the way I wanted to, because that would have been a lot easier. I don't want this to freak you guys out, because... It's so easy just to lay the strips over it and keep it nice and clean. But I wanted to try it, so we know it works. Had to give it a try. Okay, so I'm just cleaning off with my mono sand eraser any little goobers of glue that are anywhere. Not too bad, though. But you can see it's nice on both sides now. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to make a card base. I think I like this side better, actually. All right, let's make a card base. So we're going to make a card base that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Four and a quarter by 11. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to fold it at the five and a half inch mark. But I'm going to trim this down because I only want to attach it at the top. Let's trim that up a little bit. It's bugging me. There we go. So I only want to attach it at the top. So we've got about a quarter of an inch. Let's just go, instead of five and a half, we're going to go one more quarter of an inch to five and three quarters. And this is going to be our card back. Now we need our score buddy, and we're going to score at the five and a half inch mark, which would be the card base, right? Five and a half by four and a quarter. So we're just scoring a quarter inch at the top. And we're going to fold that over, flatten that out nicely. Make sure that looks good. And now we're going to attach this to the front. So this is going to become the front of the card. See how that is? <laughs> okay. I know I saw I saw Kathy Zilski talking about that she um she thought she invented something, and she probably did. Um, one of the things that a lot of us who've been making YouTube videos for a very long time, a lot of us don't watch each other's videos a lot. I mean, we go to each other's lives to be supportive, but, you know, all those years ago when we were first starting out, when all of these techniques came about, we were kind of like all busy building our channels, and I think a lot of us, we, we don't watch each other as much, mostly because we don't want to steal each other's ideas. You know what I mean? Like we just want to like come up with our own stuff. 
And so a lot of times I'll see somebody say, oh, I saw so-and-so do this. And I'll be like, I didn't see it. Um, so if somebody else out there did this technique and did it in a better way, by all means, you know, if that works better for you, this is just my brain this morning thinking about doing this. So I know a lot of you have great suggestions and, um, you know, please share them because you're helping other people. But I didn't necessarily see a different video on how to do this because I saw somebody say, well, so-and-so does this. And I'm like, I didn't see that video. Okay, so there we go. You saw what I did. I added that to that quarter of an inch at the top. And now we've got this. Now, you can do a lot of different things here. You can add a panel. So if you wanted to do color, like here I have a craft panel that just happened to be laying here. If you wanted craft to show through, you could upholster the inside and lay that on top and then craft would show through like that. Okay, guys, what do you think? Is that cute? Do you like the craft showing through? Let me just show you, because remember, it's still going to open so that it's naked. What do you think? Should I do that or should I leave it? Kathy, Kathy Z, how are you? I saw you. I thought you had a live this morning or today. I saw that come up when I was um, checking my live beforehand. I thought you had a live. Good to see you, my friend. And I think Mindy Egan popped in. Hi, Mindy. Okay, so prickly pear. You want me to do prickly pear under there? Okay, yeah, that would be a cool one to try. Let's see. Prickly pear. Ooh, I think you might be on to something, my friend. Prickly pear. Okay, Vicky likes the craft. Lots of you like the craft. Where's the black? I know, Barbara. I know, what am I doing? No craft. So should I do, I'll do, um, I'll do a little, I'll do three and three quarters by five for this. I don't wanna have to like mess it up here. Okay, let's see how it looks. Let's see if it, if you can still distinguish those. Um, mm, I love this color. Okay, what do you guys think? White is lovely too. And Kathy, you are the queen of the white space and I love that. So I'm just thinking, you know, when it opens, cause I love that it opens. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. We, we support each other. We just don't always have time to watch each other. And sometimes like if I'm trying to come up with a technique, I think, all right, I got to stay off the internet because I got to come up with something unique and different. And then I find out later that it's not unique and different. <laughs> like today. Okay. So prickly pear. Let's look at prickly pear one more time. And then let's look at craft. Okay, there's craft. And then let's go with Kathy Zilski and just look at white. So what do you think? I got to look at the comments and see what you guys think. Okay, well, while they're voting, Tom, do you have a word of the day? A word of the day. <laughs> All right, they're voting away. Yeah, right, I see a, it. This is a quick one and a silly one. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so today's word of the day is stolenoscopy. <laughs> I don't mic, even know what it means. But. My mic was down. Here it is. Stolenoscopy. Okay, so real quick, that's uh, when somebody steals a bike and then they take it home and <laughs> the police follow them home and discover their whole stash and clean out their whole stash of uh, stolen goods. That is a stolenoscopy. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Word of the day. I Back see people. I see people space. going. I'm scared of this word. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so Tom, people are saying that I should ask you what you think. <laughs> so, do you like just the plain white? Do you like the craft? And there was one more person that said gray, and I think they might be onto something. So, I do want to look at it with gray. There's the craft. 
There is the prickly pear, which I also think is very pretty. And then let's do a gray. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an interesting gray here. Well, I could do this light gray. Let's see how this looks. It's not fair to just pop it in here and not really have it. That's kind of bluish. Let's just try this moonlit fog. I'm gonna cut one quick moonlit fog piece because I feel like moonlit fog is a gray, but it's a green gray. An idea you could you could uh, let's see who is this? This was um, Kathy. Kathy, Kathy D. D. Saying glue the color to the back of the lattice. You could do that too. Oh, we definitely could do that. The thing about it though is I want it to open. This was a little tester I did. I want it to open. Let the light. Through. And I want the light to shine through. So yeah. So I mean. I think it would lend itself really beautifully to um, like an alcohol ink background or an ink blended background, but I definitely want it to be open like lattice work when you open it. Okay, so there's the gray, Tom. So which one do you like? I Plain white. I personally like the gray. You like the gray? But that is only from the dead space so yeah and gray is kind of dead space isn't it yeah it is <laughs> kind of like can you move the comments because i can't really see them Whoops. <laughs> okay so a lot of people are saying still like the pear and some people say that they like white or gray hmm Boy, just, you guys. Just about a little of everything. A little Air, of everything. Craft. Yeah, I can't get a, a grip on which one looks the best. I'm kind of liking just the white, actually. Is that bad? I'm going to go with just the white. What about something just up a little bit from white? Like, like a light color, but... Like skeleton leaves or something? I just feel like it takes no. away. Wrong John Silver. <laughs> Back in the dead space. Okay, I'm going with white. I am I have to go with white. I know it's not everybody's pick, but I have to go with white. All right, so to get this down on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just some glue onto the front here. You have to be careful because you don't want to, um, you know, you don't, you don't want to get sticky stuff through the back. So I'm just kind of seeing where it should go. I think that's going to do it. So did you see I just put little dots of glue there? And now I'm going to pop this on. And this can't hang over the edge. It's got to go within the box because the box is actually a full A2 card. So I'm going to just take my jumbo acrylic block and put that down on top to press it and make sure it just sets for a minute. And then while we do that, yeah, you could write your message on the back of the card. You could also um, add another card base on the back. You could also add a little flap on the inside of white that could open up and that would work just a little, but I think I'd probably mount this to another card base or another panel. I would do another panel on the back so it could open that way. But I like it this way. I'm just gonna leave it this way for now because I could totally write on the back. And actually what I might do with a card like this is I might just make a little note on some note paper and fold it and slip it inside and do my note that way. And then this becomes art. This becomes a little piece of artwork that they can put up. Okay, so we're gonna move this aside and we're gonna do our greeting. Now here's where my little pop of black comes in because I am gonna do my greeting in black. Kathy, are you happy that I went with white? I feel like you're such a white space girl and your cards are always so freaking gorgeous. <laughs> they are amazing. 
I didn't say a bad word. I said freaking for my people who didn't hear me. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to do two layers of ink here because this is a very delicate stamp set and I don't want to squish the greeting. It's very delicate. I think a card like this too would be great if you used like a foiled greeting on the front. That would be really nice. And this doesn't have to be a Christmas card, guys. I mean, if you could make this into any card you want with any greeting, I think if you did these flowers all in blue with like gray, blue and gray, it would be a gorgeous Hanukkah card too. Okay, so we've got Merry Christmas. And now we're gonna cut this out. And I probably am gonna have to do my little template trick because I'm a little nervous about centering it. So I am gonna get a little piece of cardstock and the coordinating die. This little die set that goes with this stamp set, this, this is from the kit. You really have to line it all up to get it on the magnet, but it works. Just in case anybody was struggling with that. You could always go back to what I just showed you and pause it and line yours up the same way. So I'm cutting a little template here. This would be really nice with um, gold embossing too. Okay. Now I'm going to put this in here and lay this here so it's perfectly centered. There we go. Perfectly centered. Nice white space all around the outside. Stolenoscopy. That's a good one. That's funny, Tom. You still there? <laughs> you still over there, Tom? <laughs> I guess I guess it depends who you ask. <laughs> okay. And now, did you see I just popped that die in there and it snapped into place? I know it's going to be perfectly centered. And I used my masking magic. Oh, yay. I love to hear everybody's kits are shipping. Our shipping team has been really, really burning the midnight oil. They have been doing amazing, getting so many orders out. They, they're doing like anywhere from like four to 500 orders a day. They're crazy. They're working very hard to get those orders out. Okay, look at that perfect cutout. Nice, nice. And now we will add, I don't even know what time it is. We're a little over. That's okay. Now I will add this greeting in here. Wait. Oh. Okay, this I'm just loving this card so much. It's so pretty. <laughs> and I'm going to tape this. I'm going to glue it. And I could go over the edge a little bit there. So I'm going to glue it. Being careful just to get the glue. I think I can do some on here because that's going to go on the flower. I can do a little on the tip there because that's going to go over the edge. Okay. I'm going to put it right here like this. Yep. Didn't get any glue through there. Hallelujah. And then I am going to add a couple little embellishments, but I'm going to put them inside here. Because there was some open space there inside the actual panel that we cut out to do that little um, floral. And I'm going to use the micro disco balls, the really tiny one. And then I lost my craft pick again. But I have another one somewhere. Yeah, think. white is definitely the, the bomb. Yeah, you think? Well, I didn't take into consideration the shadows. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Here's back. Yeah, it does make a difference when you see the shadows just resting back there. Some tinies. Don't be afraid to let your glue just sit for a minute because it really does make it easier to um, adhere your sequins then. Okay, and I think I got the sequins all in the right spots. Everything looks nice and filled in. This sequin looks a little cloudy. I'm gonna remove that one and put a different one there. A cloudy sequin, we can't have a cloudy sequin. And then we're gonna give this card away today. But I feel like I should send it to Kathy Z for suggesting the white. Kathy, I'll send you a different card. I promise. See, I didn't let that sit long enough, but that's all right. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at this one up close. That little bit of sparkle. And when it opens, and just tuck a note in. Oh, I wish I could just like do that view for you so you could see how pretty it is. I'm going to um, definitely take a picture of it standing up to add into my community tab over here on Facebook and also, I mean, over here, well, on Facebook and on YouTube. The community tab is on YouTube. That's where I post pictures of all my projects. And then on Facebook, I post it right in the group and on our page as well. So, so what do you guys think of this technique? It's nice. It, you know, you can see some of that, but at least the edges are all nice and clean around the inside. And a big shout out to Amy for making me test this theory of whether or not it would work to cut the second one out this way. I think it did work. Although I do agree, was it Larry who said it was like brain surgery? <laughs> it was a little like brain surgery. So if you don't want to do that, by all means, just take some strips, go around the outside, and then flip it over. You could even do one strip at a time where, you know, you start at the top and then you can just line it up and slice it down. So, all right. Well, what do you think, Tom? Give you. this one away? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, you got to try it. And you can make yours go all the way if you want a full lattice. You can also, instead of having the rectangle, cut out a big oval and have the lattice going inside the oval. I think there are just so many opportunities here to create this style card. And it does feel very Christmassy, even though that's not necessarily a Christmas flower. It is for this card. And it's a great way to use your stash and pull out some of the older things. All right, I'll stop talking now, Tom, and let's give this one away. Okay. So we're going to do our required cheesy drum roll. Okay. Woo! Giving away this gorgeous lattice card. And that goes to Brandy Pickering. Brandy Pickering. Yay, Brandy. Oh, Brandy. You've been here a long time today. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Um, everybody, this was so much fun. Brandy, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com and I'll get this card out to you. Well, like I said, this was so much fun today. I hope you guys learned something new or maybe a new way to try this um, lattice technique and make use of all of those strips. They don't have to be white. You can do this in craft or other colors. You can mix and match and have rainbow stripes, whatever blows your hair back. I'm sure it will be beautiful. And uh, Tom and I are going to try, well, I'm going to try to get back this weekend with a five-minute card project. And then Tom and I will be back next Tuesday night with another Stampin', Stampin' Chat Live, and we might have something special coming, I hope. We'll see. All right, everybody. Well, Thank you guys so much for joining us. Stay safe and healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.